Grab your hiking boots and sleeping bags, because it's time for summer camp in the rugged Coagulation Cascades. That's right, while campers trek through the picturesque wilderness and try not to get too many cuts and scrapes, we'll look at the clotting process, including the intrinsic, extrinsic, and common pathways. But before we get into the nitty-gritty, some background. Forming a clot involves a lot of intermediate steps and a bunch of coagulation factors. These factors start life as inactive plasma proteins that are converted, or activated, into enzymes, which then catalyze subsequent enzymes in the cascade. A kind of chain reaction. Most of these factors are initially produced by the liver. Four of them are considered vitamin K-dependent factors because vitamin K is necessary for their production by the liver. This includes factors 10, 9, 7, and 2, aka prothrombin. In addition to these coagulation factors, there are two vitamin K-dependent anticoagulant proteins, proteins S and C, that prevent overcoagulation. To help you remember this, we've blasted back to the year 1972 and marked out sketchy summer camp with this kids summer camp sign. Emphasis on the K, S, and C. These vitamin K dependent factors are important to remember because drugs that inhibit the activation of vitamin K, like warfarin, will prevent the liver from producing adequate or fully functional coagulation factors, producing an anticoagulant effect. This is also why the effects of warfarin can be reversed by giving vitamin K or even eating vitamin K rich foods, such as leafy green vegetables. All right, with that out of the way, let's survey the area, starting with this cascading waterfall within the trees, which will represent the intrinsic pathway. This pathway, also known as the contact activation pathway, begins with factor 12. Factor 12 is activated on contact with activated platelets or on contact with collagen or basement membrane following damage to endothelial cells. Hence why these 12-shaped dead trees with collagen-like triple helix trunks are at the top of our cascade. Once activated, factor 12 then catalyzes the conversion of factor 11 to 11A, which is represented by these 11, or Roman numeral 11, shaped signs, warning of dangerous rapids. But where do these rapids lead? Is there a detour? And what danger lies ahead? <laughs> Speaking of danger, that's one giant squirrel and he looks hungry for blood. In addition to terrorizing campers, you'll notice he's also shaped like the number nine because he represents the conversion of factor nine to nine A, which is catalyzed by factor 11 A. And yep, we've taken a little bit of a detour since we skipped factor 10 for now. 